All right, we are at day eight. Day eight is a very important day because again, the mightiest army list is being published. It happens every four days. So the fourth day, the eighth day, the twelfth day, and also new technologies have become available. Let's go check it out. You can see that Central America with myself, I have 8% of the mightiest army. South Mexico has 6%. No surprise, he has been playing very well. And he's also Access Doctrine like me. And then you've got Florida who is a, a very talented player. And then all the others have 5% and 4% as they are Allies Doctrine. They need a bit more time to get into the game. West Texas went AI. Also Pennsylvania. And however, North California came back online. Because when I go to the Diplomacy menu, click on AI, then I first have all the player countries. I am ranked second by the way and then we have got the AI countries that they all gave right of way. However North California is a player again but he has right of way so he came back online easy to see and then players that went AI we're gonna give them also right of way perfect. Let's go to the research tree in the infantry tab level 5 infantry has now become available in the ordnance nothing interesting for me as I'm only going to produce anti-air. In the tank branch we have got the light tank research that can get started so I should probably do that. I am not going to research medium tank level 2 yet because first I want to have 10 medium tanks. In the air tab I'm already researching level 3 and then straight after I am going to research level 4 as well. I still need 9 hours so I'm gonna be able to launch it tomorrow morning. Also submarine level 4 is now available and in the secret branch I need to wait until day 14 before I can unlock a level 3 rocket artillery. However I would like to produce SP rocket artillery as they're faster and better but that is for the future. I have also almost taken care of Venezuela now. I'm gonna capture his uh, last province that rebelled over here. Let's select all my units. So I've got all my 32 infantry still. They're level 4. The 6 anti-air I started with. Got 2 railroad guns now. 10 rocket artillery that I need to upgrade. Got 10 interceptors now that I also need to upgrade. Got 3 naval bombers. I'm gonna produce 2 more to have 5 of them. Got 5 subs level 3. Got 8 medium tanks now. I'd like to have 2 more. 15 level Level 3 armored cars and 5 light tanks. So I've almost reached my goal. I want 10 medium tanks and then I can uh, upgrade those medium tanks. The 10 interceptors, I've got them. 10 rocket RTO to upgrade and I can focus on the production of railroad guns together with anti-air units. It's looking pretty good. I have got now 96 units and I have been very efficient in my upgrades. So that's really, really cool. I'm going to queue up a couple of railroad guns more. Got a medium tank in production in Guatemala, that will be number 9. Here have got one in the queue, I need a bit more manpower. Alright, looking good. The next day. Alright, welcome back. We are now day 9, in 6 hours and 24 minutes it's gonna be day 10. It has been a while, I've recorded as I've worked a 27 hour shift and then went straight to bed afterwards because I was uh, very tired. A lot has happened in my absence because today is Sunday, I've worked uh, during the start of the weekend and well players they traditionally they attack during the weekend because they have a lot of time and so we've got Florida and Alabama who are heavily under fire. Florida is lucky he has been able to uh, almost crush Pennsylvania entirely as you can see he has little to no units left he's now fighting actually main. Pennsylvania wasn't a very good player and so got invaded fast however Florida damaged his units doing so and so basically Maine used Pennsylvania as a shield and Maine is a very good player he uh, is directing the other players it's a five versus three yesterday West Ontario surprise attacked Manitoba while he was asleep West Ontario was able to uh, advance initially but lost a lot of units in the process but also Manitoba's units are uh, damaged however Manitoba has artillery West Ontario doesn't so that can only end in one way he went with 
medium tanks, man. Allied medium tanks are not good. The whole tank branch of allies is not good. Allies should only make tank destroyers, but that's my honest opinion. And of course, armored cars. Armored cars are fast, powered by uh, tactical bombers. You can go deep into enemy territory and fast. Anyway, and then we have got Alabama, who is struggling. He was winning against Ohio. However, we have got now also Nebraska, who started attacking, who is being a bit of a nope, as he's not protecting his artillery whatsoever. He doesn't have a meat shield of infantry anti-tanks in there, he doesn't have anti-air, he doesn't have interceptors to protect his airspace, he's just gonna get hammered man. So please guys, if you use artillery, make sure that you protect those units carefully. Artillery is a very valuable unit, you need to protect them with unarmored units to protect them against unarmored units, you need anti-tanks to protect them against armored units, you need anti-air in them to protect them against bombers, and you need interceptors to protect yourself against the bombers obviously. Nebraska didn't even stack his units. He attacked with a stack of three medium tanks, a stack of four ta medium tanks now. He had the advantage man. He surprise attacks while Alabama over here is asleep. Shells him with artillery. I've pinged Alabama on Discord that he was under attack. Luckily he had his notification switched on and it was 4 a.m. for him. He was able to bring in his uh, second artillery stack. I mean this is pretty noob gameplay from Nebraska man. But so now we've got Alabama who is facing both Ohio and Nebraska. We got Florida who is facing Maine and Pennsylvania. But the big worry is East Texas that could be able to flank Alabama. So Alabama can't even engage with his full army against his two aggressors because he risks getting flanked right. So uh, I need to move fast. I've decided not to take Amazonas as it is a huge, has a little resources. Well I had some resources but uh, the provinces are very big. It took me take several days to take this for only one capital. It's not interesting, I'm not gonna do it. So uh, I've pulled back all my units so that I can attack our friends over here. Got already 10 medium tanks that have moved ahead. I'm going to drive with my medium tanks. Two Corpus Christi, San Antonio, Austin, gonna take out everything I can. I mean 500 hit points over here, they deal 112 damage in attack. I'm gonna obliterate anything that passes in my path. I'm just gonna take out all the cities and then I might actually just uh, move through Dallas because I've got right of way with Colorado so I'm just gonna attack New Mexico over here and move through Colorado to get to Nebraska man. I can take out all his core provinces over here go to his capital with a stack of 10 medium tanks they'll never see that coming man like ever. Manitoba is going to win in his uh, one versus one against West Ontario now that he recovered he probably just woke up now so he's dealing with uh, incursions in his core provinces as soon as those units are taken out he's going to be able to uh, take back territory that he's lost and West Ontario isn't very active he's just sitting there taking the damage diplomacy in this game is very important and we've got Maine who is doing it very well by looking at player profiles he has figured out that Florida Alabama and Manitoba are in the same alliance and so he has uh, instigated his his coalition members and non-coalition members to attack together. We've got West Ontario that's attacking Manitoba, we've got Ohio and Nebraska that are attacking Alabama and we've got Maine that is attacking Florida together with here Pennsylvania. So it is five versus three and Maine figured this out all by looking at player profiles. It is extremely important to check profiles of other players to see if they're in an alliance. So you can just click on any province from any player. Click on the breast statue over here. This is the in-game profile. You can see the capital with how many countries the player is at war, uh, how many units he skilled and lost during this game, how many provinces he captured and lost his average province morale, his level, but if you click on service record then you can see more details about his overall games that he played and very important you can see here the 
alliance. You can see that uh, the player in question is Rod Paolo and he's in the alliance BM and company. So when Ming checked out this profile, he must have seen fast that Manitoba, for example, also is in BM and Co alliance. And so very fast you can see how the allegiances are on the map. So please, if you ever want to accept someone in your coalition, you want to give someone shared maps, please check carefully on the map if they aren't playing together in a coalition, right? You can see here that they have intel on a main. I can see what he is doing. He's sending, for example, an armored car into the sea to surprise Florida. How was this done with espionage? You can see this is old intel from 6 p.m. 36. And you can also see the countdown over here. The travel time. He still needs 7 hours 33 minutes to go where he was. This was done with spice a day change. So with spice you can review the location of all the units of a player. You can see here main intelligence report reviewed all armies. Multiple spies were put in multiple provinces, Caribou, Alagage, Jonesboro, Medway and Waterville. And revealing armies is very very interesting. You do it by putting spies on military sabotage and one spy costs 40,000 a day. To put spies in a province you can click on any province, you click on spies, then you can recruit one for $10,000 and then put them on military military sabotage, economical sabotage or intelligence. If you want to learn more about how spies work, then you can just watch my guide to espionage for more details. But so yeah, spies are very useful to reveal enemy units. And so I know by this that Main had 67 units. Of course, the units that have been lost since they change have been deducted. And I can't see the units that he produced since they changed. So this number is not accurate anymore. What have I done this uh, past day and a half? In the research tab I am now upgrading medium tank to level 3. It's gonna take 24 hours more and as I've produced a lot of anti-air I finally decided to do the upgrade to level 2 and as soon as that is done I'm also going to do the level 3 upgrade because soon at day 10 I can even have a research level 4 if I wish to do so. In the tank branch I've got now a light tank level 3 that has been completed. I'm waiting on the manpower to be able to upgrade them and of course I've upgraded my armored cars to level 3 long time ago. In the air tab I have finally finished the research interceptor level 4 so I'm gonna be able to upgrade those units. As I have now 5 naval bombers I'm gonna be able to charge the research to go uh, to level 4 for the naval bombers and as I have now 10 interceptors 5 naval bombers I'm gonna be able to start producing also attack bombers. In the naval tab I I'm able to research submarine level 4 which I'm not going to do because navy is not a priority at this time and in the secret tab everything is still the same. I've started to upgrading my uh, rocket artillery to level 2. In the near future I'd like to switch to SP rocket artillery but I can't do yet because I want to finish the research mentions before. Of an army I'm gonna select all my units. 32 level 4 infantry, 10 interceptors level 1 that are ready to be upgraded to level 3, 5 submarines level 3, 5 naval bombers, got 10 medium tanks that I can upgrade, 15 armored cars level 3, 15 rocket artillery that can be upgraded, got 5 light tanks that can be upgraded, got now 16 anti-air and 5 railroad guns, got one stack over here of rocket artillery that still needs to go back to the mainland, but over here I am upgrading already five rocket artillery and I'm stacking all my units together in the railroad gun stack before I move north. Need a couple more artillery and infantry over here in the stack because when I split it up I'm gonna have 10 anti-air, 10 infantry and five railroad guns which only leaves five infantry, five anti-air and five rocket artillery and they need to be protected a little bit better so I'm making a couple more anti-air. I have also invested a lot in economy. I'm gonna go to province that administration. I'm gonna filter by morale. You can see now that I have in all my core cities I have got level 3 recruitment stations. Got a sixth railroad gun in production. Got a naval base and my tank plants that are level 2. 
I am not going to upgrade my Ordnance Foundry. I'm just going to spam sufficient anti-air units before I upgrade them so that I don't have to produce air units anymore. This way I save the resources from upgrading the building and I've just attained enough manpower to produce a queued up anti-air. That's pretty cool. I've got level 4 industry in my steel province now. I'm also going to construct a level 4 industry in my oil build. I don't want to do the same for my rare materials but I'm gonna lack the resources. I lack a thousand 150 metal so I'm gonna check on the market how much metal costs the metal is pretty cheap so that's cool I'm gonna buy 2000 metal except and I would like even to buy more metal I have a lot of goods that I'm not using but I'm afraid if I sell goods that I'm gonna sell them to the future enemy I can give them trade embargo so that they don't get any goods from me when I trade in the stock market but I don't want to tip them off because they're gonna need a lot of goods to produce artillery and planes so I could just sell a thousand food instead to get more money thousand food except then I have now 50k money which enables me to buy another 2000 steel or actually I can buy a thousand steel and then I can also buy thousand rare materials there we go you can use the market to balance out your economy that is pretty practical there we go so now I can build my industry built perfect I've also started developing my rural provinces got a level one industry now in my oil province and also here in my steel so that's cool rural level one industry enhance my economy with 35 percent building rural industry are a great way to enhance your economy fast but they're less interesting than cities because in a regular rural province you only produce a thousand five hundred resources instead of in a city where you produce six thousand resources four times more and even with level three industry that can be enhanced the very fast I produce for example now 8,699 oil in San Jose a level 2 local industry enhances your economy with a hundred percent and on level 3 it's 200 percent so plus a hundred that already doubles your production so instead of a thousand five hundred resources you're gonna produce three thousand and with 200 percent at level 3 you're gonna produce four thousand five hundred resources with level 3 and actually with level Level 3 rural industry you're gonna produce 200 resources more a day than in a city however their maximum is level 3 man whereas in my cities I can go to level 5 which is really interesting because a level 5 gives you plus 100 percent but it's plus 100 percent from 6,000 so that's 12,000 resources cities have the full potential of producing 12,000 resources every 24 hours whereas rural provinces can maximum produce 4,500 resources. So even if initially you can develop the rural provinces a bit faster and get 200 production of resources extra a day compared to level 3 in cities, you need to build in cities first because you need to reach the full potential of level 5 as fast as possible. Not only have I built rural industry, but around my capital over here in San Miguel, east of my capital and also rest of my capital in both provinces have started constructing a level 2 recruitment offices because in provinces that don't produce resources you produce 4500 manpower whereas provinces that produce resources only have 115 manpower that's three times less so once you have level 3 recruitment offices like I do in all my cities you can start developing rural provinces without resource production first so actually if you want to max out your complete economy and all the provinces where you don't produce resources you should have level 3 recruitment offices and in all provinces that produce resources you should have level 3 industry however I have never played the game or very rarely played it I think I did it once where I had my course completely developed with all maxed out industry and recruitment offices in all my core provinces I think I only did that once because the game lasted uh, longer than 20 days but usually I don't do it it rarely happens that I do it I only had it once on a hundred player map that's it and the reason why I am doing it around my capital is because their province morale is the highest as I'm gonna expand further away from my capital or I 
stop conquering new capitals from other players to get an economical advantage, the morale of my provinces can actually go down. And I can see this in the province administration already. I've got Belize City, San Jose, for example, that have the morale trend stable, but they don't have the morale trend rising. You have the morale trend raising, stable, and then the next phase is declining. And once my morale trend is declining in my core provinces, I am going to have to build propaganda offices in order to develop the morale in my provinces with 10%. And then of course, with level 2, I get 23 additional morale. And with level 3, I get 40% additional province morale. It is important in this game to find the right balance between warfare and economy because you need resources for your units but all the resources that you invest in your economy you can invest the resources for units the resources that you spend in your economy are an investment in the future but by doing so you hamper the production of your units right and without units you can't defend your country nor your economy so you always need to find the right balance between investing in economy and investing in units or in upgrading them i hope you have enjoyed this video please subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications i want to say a warm thank you to my members and elite members for supporting this channel